Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick video here showing how to update the RetroTeam 4K. Um, yeah, there is a really nice guide which I'll show you in just a second. I'll leave a link to it in, uh, in the description as well. Um, yeah, but I've I've just had a lot of problems <laughs> updating it. Um, yeah, <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to make this video to show what I did to get it to work. And yeah, hopefully this will help someone. So yeah, if you like these videos, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, all that stuff and uh, let me know if you know an easier way to do this too but anyway uh, let's go ahead and get started so <clears throat> so uh, first off um, to uh, to start the update process you want to go ahead and uh, take out the SD card um, and before you do that make sure you turn off the RetroTune 4k see that green light went off and then it, it is off right now just as a extra safety precaution though I'm also going to turn off this power strip that it's uh, connected to just to make sure there's no power going to it because yeah before I don't know how but somehow in the update process before I actually somehow corrupted my SD card and so I had to reformat it and yeah it was kind of a whole process of figuring that out so anyway just be very careful to I, again I don't know how I did it but yeah just make sure you have this turned off when you unplug it <laughs> anyway um, yeah, now let's go ahead and uh, plug it into the computer though. Okay, so here we are on the computer. Got this really nice uh, CRT monitor hooked up here with Linux. And uh, yeah, and then um, a lot of computers have a slot for these SD cards. Um, this one doesn't, however, so I'm just going to be using the uh, SD card reader that came with the RetroTeam 4K. Everyone should have one of these. I got one. So yeah, there's the one side that's USB Type C. Plug it into your phone or into your computer that doesn't have USB Type-A, I guess. Um, however, mine does have used USB Type-A, so that's the side I'm going to be using. So yeah, just going to plug this in right like this. Oh, and then also uh, make sure that your SD card is um, not on lock. So yeah, make sure that this is pushed up. Don't If it's pushed down, then there'll be read-only, and you won't be able to read or uh, write anything to it. See so yeah, anyway, just like that, and then I'm just going to plug it in. Oh, and uh, also when you plug it in, I recommend plugging it directly into your computer. Um, don't try to use like a USB extension cable or like a USB dongle, or anything like that. Sometimes those don't provide enough power uh, for these USB drives. Um, so yeah, just plug it into a port that's directly located on your computer. So yeah, let me go ahead and plug that in real quick. Okay, so now the SD card is. Uh, plugged in. You can see it now it shows up down here. Retro Team 4K. Uh, yeah, I actually named it that because uh, I don't remember what it was called before. It might have been called that before, but yeah, I had to reformat this like I said. So anyway, hopefully I can help people to avoid the pitfalls that I went through. Um, but yeah, anyway, you can see this post that Mike Chi put on Twitter, or I guess it's called X now. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is where you want to go to get the firmware. Um, and I guess it's also on the the uh, retro 4k uh, wiki um but yeah this this is a nice page though because it just has everything uh well organized and yeah you can see it's got um yeah all these steps these are basically the steps that i'm telling you but yeah i don't know when i was trying to follow them though i was uh running into quite a few problems so <laughs> yeah again hopefully this can help but um yeah anyway uh, now this is one thing uh, when if you are uh, updating from the 1.0 firmware which is the launch firmware then it's recommend to using the reset button method uh, rather than going through the menu and yes I do believe this is true because when I try to go through the menu um, I couldn't get it to work <laughs> uh, yeah in fact at one point it even froze and I don't know maybe that's why my SD card got corrupted so yeah I would definitely recommend doing this but I'll I'll show you the um, the other method too uh, yeah because I can show you it with um, with the 1.0 actually you know what I'll, I'll show you at the end I'll, after I do the after I update it then I'll show you how to update it with the, going through the menu because uh, yeah that should work um, but anyway but yeah so first off what I'm going to do since I've already updated my card I'm actually going to go over here to the uh, console uh, mods uh, retro for uh, retro team 4k wiki page where I can download a, a new copy of the uh, firmware the 1.0 firmware just so I can show you how to update it. Um, so yeah, anyway, let me go ahead and uh, copy these files over to my SD card real quick. Okay, and while these are copying, uh, I just want to emphasize you do not need to do this for updating. This is only if you want to, for whatever reason, get the 
the original stock SD card um, back on your, yeah, load it up again. Um, Cause yeah, usually, yeah, you don't need to do this. <laughs> so yeah, I'm only doing this again, just to show you, you know, how to, you know, start from version 1.0 and then go up to uh, 1. Uh, 1.10 or 2.3 or whatever firmware you're trying to update to. Um, also, uh, when I did this, uh, I actually didn't copy my profile because if you see, if I go in here, I actually have one um, custom profile down here. And so, yeah, I actually had more custom profiles, but I actually lost them. Uh, so yeah, before you start doing like any of this update stuff, I actually recommend you just copying your profile, um, your profile uh, uh, folder, and then just saving it somewhere. So I'll save it in this RetroTink 4K folder that I have. So yeah, just make a copy of that because that's where all your custom profiles are. Um, so anyway, so yeah, once you have a copy of that, then the next step is going to be um, you're going to want to go over to again this page again. Uh, this uh, I'll put a link for this page in the description as well. But um, yeah, anyway, just scroll down a little bit until you see the firmware version that you want. And so yeah, in this case, we're going to get this uh, version 1.1.0. And click download on here. Okay, and then I've already downloaded it, but I'll just download it again. <laughs> Why not? It's a pretty small file. Okay. So then once that downloads, then you're just going to want to open up the folder where it is and then just copy it. I guess you could download it directly onto the SD card too if you really want to, but yeah. And then I'm just going to paste it here. Okay. And then again, this might be, you know, look different depending on your operating system, but like I think on Windows, it says like just unzip. Um, on, on this distro of Linux, it's extract. And Mac OS, I think it's like expand or something, I don't remember. But anyway, just <laughs> something along those lines. You want to extract or unzip the this zip file. So yeah, and again, it's really fast because it's yeah not not that big of a file. Okay, and then I'm just gonna delete this original zip file, and then yeah, this and then this uh, folder is where our new files are. Um, so yeah, so first off, you're gonna want to take this uh, retrotink uh, 4k uh, up.bin file and you're going to want to copy this and then you're going to want to paste it here and you're going to replace this old one here so you can see the old one was from the first of december um, so yeah just replace that so this basically tells the retrotink 4k which firmware you're trying to update to and so yeah you just want to make sure you have this new one and then um, this file is the actual like uh, firmware version and so yeah you can see this is the, the original version um, and yeah you, you can see in these instructions down here um, it says to uh, to not replace this if you want to go through the menu um, like you can see here do not delete the old uh, .rbf firmware file if you do be forced to update with the reset button method so yeah, so that's actually what I tried to do before. Um, I tried to not delete this, and then I tried to go through the menu and update. Uh, however, that did not work. <laughs> so yeah, I think that that's why at the top here it says to yeah just do the reset button method. It's a better way to to get this to actually reset. Um, so yeah, anyway. Um, so basically, long story short, just take both of these files out of here and copy them. So we already copied the other one. Now we're going to copy this RBF since we are going to do the reset button method. So I'm just going to paste that here and then I'm going to delete this old one. So then there's just one RBF file and see now, you, now it says it's the 1.10.rbf. Uh, uh, so yeah, so now our SD card should be set up to uh, uh, now we'll go back to the RetroTINK 4K and do the update. Oh, and uh, before I forget to, <laughs> again, just avoid all possible <laughs> possibility, all possibilities of corruption. Just make sure you safely eject your card. <laughs> like, yeah, see, like it's saying that there's stuff in the trash. Yeah, just say empty trash, you know, just clear everything out, safely eject. Give a second here. See, now it says device can be removed. 
can be safely unplugged. So yeah, just yeah, do that. You know, whatever operating operating system you're on, you know, right click, safe, safely remove, or you know, the eject error or whatever. But yeah, anyway, now let's go ahead and plug it into the RetroTink 4K. Okay, here we are back on the RetroTink 4K. Yeah, I'm just gonna make sure this is turned off. Yeah. And again, just set everything turned off when you're <laughs> messing with this memory card stuff. All right, so now plug that in. And then I'm gonna turn on this power switch. Or sorry, not the power switch, I meant to and turn my TV just so we can see what's happening on the screen. Because before we turn on the power switch, we're gonna wanna hold down this reset button back here. So yeah, just need something to push this in. This is a Nintendo 64 expansion back removal or expansion pack removal tool. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just gonna hold that in while I power it on. So we'll go down here and okay, here we go. All right, you can see that red light comes on. Okay, and I'm gonna let go of the reset. Um, but yeah, anyway, it takes, uh, it says in the instruction about 40 seconds. For me, it seems like it takes less than 40 seconds. So but yeah, now you can see that it is uh, working now. So yeah, it's uh, went through and reset and it's uh, updated now. And we can confirm that by going in. Actually, it says it down here on the bottom. Let's me change my camera so you can see it better. Okay, there we go. That's easy to read. Yeah, you can see down here at the bottom, it says it is 1.1.0. And then, yeah, so now I'll show you the way where you can go through with the menu and update. So yeah, again, this may or may not work for you if you're going from 1.0 to 1.1 or whatever. Um, yeah, it wasn't really working for me, but, uh, but yeah. But if you're on a higher firmware version, then supposedly this should work. So now you can see, you just go down here to check SD card and click on that. And then, yeah, I mean, we already have just 1.1 on there, but um, so yeah, it's just gonna upgrade to the same thing, but yeah, then you just hit okay. Then it kind of does the same thing. And yeah, that uh, pink light is flashing on the RetroTint 4K. Yeah, anyway, just give it a second and then, yeah, just reboots. And then, yeah, you can see we're on the 1.1.0. Um, so, yeah, anyway, that's how you update the RetroTint 4K. And yeah, and now that I've done it, it actually seems pretty simple. But yeah, for some reason, it took me a long time to figure all this stuff out. So, anyway, hope this video can help uh, someone out. And yeah, we'll uh, talk to you later. And uh, again, just to reiterate, I definitely recommend doing the reset button method. It seems like that you know, was a lot more reliable, at least when going from 1.0 to 1.1. Yeah, just replace those two files that come out of the, um, the zip file. Yeah, just replace the, yeah, the two that are in the root directory of the RetroTink uh, 4K SD card. And then, yeah, and then just hold down that uh, reset button when you turn on the RetroTune 4K. And yeah, that's a pretty good way to update. So anyway, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.